Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, so welcome to the first trading day of 2024. Uh, so I have good news and I have bad news. So let's get to the what I think is the good news first. Uh, so ProShares finally uh, responded uh, with some good um, information. So they gave me kind of like, like the background information first. So it seeks investment results before fees and expenses that tracks the S&P 500 daily cover call index, which is fine, which makes sense. Uh, I've covered this myself already. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, my initial impressions video, uh, please go ahead and watch it at your own leisure. Uh, okay, so it says, okay, it's gonna replicate the performance of a cover call strategy uh, that combines a long position in the S&P 500 index with a short position in S&P 500 index call options. That makes sense. Uh, again, uh, this is information I think we um, already knew. Uh, one day to expiration when sold and out of the money strike price, uh, you know, et cetera. Um, when the short call op option position is re established each day, the position size is equivalent to 100% of the long portfolio position size. Again, I think we already knew that. Uh, the fund intends to track the performance of the index by investing in the S&P 500 index securities, uh, stocks of the S&P 500 index, and S&P 500 index futures. Okay, we, we see that. And by entering swap agreements to gain exposure to the short call positions of the index. Okay, so that was my guess. So it's good to that they're um, confirming. Um, and the swap reference asset uh, this is where it's really important. Uh, there's a S&P 500 daily cover call index call only sub index. So that makes sense. So that's good. So I, it was good to, that they confirm my suspicions. Uh, so then the daily gain and loss of the swap is based on the daily performance of the reference asset, which is the daily cover call index, a call only uh, sub index. Uh, so they broke up like the S&P uh, 500, the daily cover call uh, index into the different like uh, constituent parts. So this sub index, this is also something that, you know, I guess like on your own time, you can also uh, look at it at your own leisure. Uh, so it's good that they um, kind of made that distinction here. Uh, the measures of short call position of the index and accordingly has performance that replicates or reflects the uh, option premiums received and payments upon in the uh, money expirations when they occur for the options sold daily. Um, so I guess like the only thing I would add is like, you know, I guess if, if uh, ProShares is watching, uh, maybe, I guess if it's legally okay to maybe publish like maybe the swap term sheet. Uh, I mean, that's more of like a curiosity question, but I guess like this helps explain uh, what the swaps are doing. And we know that at least they, they uh, at least for this current set of swaps, uh, that they're done with Coleman Sachs. So, you know, uh, that's, I guess that's fine. Uh, and then the assets of the fund um, are held in S&P 500 stocks and short-term money market instruments. Because right? it was interesting. Uh, so I asked if it was in cash or treasuries. Uh, so it's kind of, my suspicion was kind of correct. Uh, so it's short-term money market instruments, which includes treasuries and cash. Uh, it might include um, uh, repurchase agreements, uh, but you know, I guess as long as they disclose it in their um, uh, like the, the prospectus, that's fine. Uh, and I guess if they have also in the future, if they have like a maybe um, like another report or like a you know those like uh, shareholder reports, uh, we might be able to see kind of like the breakdowns. Um, but anyway, the assets held in short-term money market instruments are used as collateral for the swap position and margin for the futures position. Okay, so that, that also confirms uh, my suspicion as well. Uh, so similar to how uh, yield max and defines where they're using uh, treasuries as kind of like the collateral base uh, for, for these uh, derivative positions. All right, so the long S&P 500 exposure of the fund can be determined by adding the market value S&P 500 stock positions and then the notional value of the S&P 500 futures position. Okay, so I had that partially correct. And then, so like my guess that the uh, the rest of it was in um, treasuries was partially correct. Uh, that, uh, so that also includes like, you know, cash and other uh, market, uh, money market instruments that make up the balance. So the short S&P 500 index call option exposure is equal to the notional value of the swap position. Okay, so that's, uh, I think that solves um, uh, most of our um, queries. 
Uh, so I think I'm pretty satisfied with this response. So, so it took longer than I expected, but you know, it was the holiday, so I'll give them a break on that. Uh, so let's get back into like the uh, the daily uh, action here. So based on like what they published on um, uh, December 29th, uh, that they show like the options, like the kind of like the simulated position. Uh, so you know, again, I did like the. Uh, the strike price divided by like this moneyness uh, to get 47.69.93, and that was pretty close to what they uh, what the SPX close was uh, from December 29th, 2023. Um, and I also assumed that the ISLAC got filled at a mid price of 70 cents, uh, so that means a potential win of um, you know one basis point for the day, any appreciation to 48.10, uh, so that would have bumped it up to 85 basis points for the day, which would have been nice. Uh, so on the defiance side uh, for Jeppy, uh, they filled at sixteen dollars and fifteen cents. Um, divide that by the forty-seven eighty uh, strike, and that's good for thirty-four basis points for the day. Um, so then, like you know, this was the option chain uh, before the open, and then uh, unfortunately, this is where um, the, the bad news comes in. Uh, guys, sorry about the voice. Um, <clears throat> I guess it's winter time, so uh, but hopefully I'm not getting sick. Uh, Defiance loss of, it's another womp womp day. Uh, so unfortunately Defiance uh, lost uh, 44 basis points for the day. Uh, technically ProShares had a partial win. Uh, they got their one basis point for the cover call, but then they got uh, some depreciation, uh, 27 points. Um, and that unfortunately drags them down to like 56 uh, basis points for the day. Uh, so I guess in a way, Defines kind of wins, but you know, not by much. Um, it is also interesting to note that you know, if it was a the other way around, uh, pro shares would have had like the uh, they, they they would have had like a um like a higher upside. So it's kind of interesting to note, but unfortunately, it didn't work out for either one. Uh, so also, I guess a pyrrhic victory uh defines wins a little bit by um they have a higher uh, trading volume for the day, um, and then. Of course, I refreshed this, and I, we still don't have any um, information about the distributions. So hopefully, I'm I'm hoping for like the close to like the end of the month, or actually, if they pre-announce it a little bit earlier, probably maybe like the third week, maybe. Uh, but I, realistically, it'll probably be like the last week of the month. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I'm losing my voice here. So uh, I still think it's a good time to be alive. Is uh, the new year didn't quite uh, get off to like a good start. Uh, might be because uh, traders might still be nursing hangovers from any uh, celebrations, uh, but I still think that the competition is still good for the space. Um, it's good that we have different uh, risk return um, profiles that we can choose from, uh, and potential distribution dates as well. And actually, I should delete the sentence now. Now that we have a little bit more information, uh, I don't think um, it's not as opaque as we as it used to be, and the customer service did deliver. So. Uh, Defiance is definitely uh, actually today was actually uh, the flip side, um, so I actually got to get rid of this as well. Um, uh, I guess it kind of flip flops between uh, depending what strikes they choose, but this still stands though. The implied volatility, uh, even though for like today it rose a little bit, uh, it still means like the um, so this will be good for like the following day. Where both, if, if it's like a positive day, they could potentially be collecting a little bit more premium tomorrow. Uh, but definitely, uh, things could get cheaper. Um, and again, I might have to pause this series uh, just because, well, maybe not boredom. I guess like today, of uh, it's a little bit more exciting, so I'll delete this as well. Uh, it's more to kind of like just save my voice. Actually, you know what? It could get boring, so I'll just leave this here. Uh, sorry for, for the flip flop. Um, but I, I'll get as like I'll try to bring it back from time to time uh, when I see something interesting uh, between um, uh, you know and, you know the price action of the day or like the volatility spikes or whatever. Uh, so again, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you can like and share this video, I would greatly appreciate it because uh, um, as you can hear, I'm trying to I'm doing my best here. Uh, and uh, if you can you know I I uh, if you can subscribe, that would. Be, greatly appreciate it as well. I appreciate all my new and old subscribers. So again, uh, sorry about the voice, but um, I hope everyone has a good one. Uh, and I hope like the, 
the new year brings everybody like some good money. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.